So what happened last night? Oh, yeah, go ahead. <clears throat> My takeaway is that the system works. We live in a democracy. Mm -hmm. People spoke. I vehemently disagree with the decision mm -hmm. that Americans made. I think that his diehard fans don't care what he does. The he lies and lies constantly. It is a moment to listen to the voters. And this, I have to say, I've always thought he could win. And I think there are some lessons from it. The View co-hosts recapping the 2024 presidential election results, dissecting Donald Trump's victory over Kamala Harris. We made history for a reason tonight, and the reason is going to be just that. Now, if you didn't vote, you really don't have a say in the conversation. <laughs> right. So you can go ahead and sit down. <laughs> I think that in 2016, we didn't know what we would get from um, a Trump administration, we know now that he will have almost unfettered power. And so I worry, not about myself actually, I worry about my children's future, especially my daughter, who now has less rights than I have. It's a personal hot topic for former federal prosecutor Sonny Hostin, who swipes at one particular record set on Tuesday night. Trump becoming the first president elected after being convicted of dozens of felonies. I'm profoundly disturbed that the 14th Amendment of the Constitution did not prevent someone who participated in an insurrection from becoming president of the United States. I think that going forward, the convicted felon box on employment applications better be taken off. I just think it's such an important time in our country. It is a moment to listen to the voters. And this, I have to say, I've always thought he could win. I thought in the final stretch she might eke it out. I didn't expect it to be this resounding. I would be lying if I sat at the table and defended Donald Trump. I know him personally. I worked for him. And I just wish people would remember there is more that unites us than divides us as Americans, just as people. Another Republican at the table, Anna Navarro, who actually swapped parties and worked to elect Harris, she called Kamala's headquarters last night a very sad scene. Today we can be sad. Tomorrow we stand up and we continue. We have every right as Americans, because we love this country, we have the right and the duty to speak up and denounce abuses of power, to be vigilant. And so I invite all Americans to do it. As for Whoopi Goldberg, she pointed out a major win for Harris, replacing President Joe Biden on the Democratic ticket in the 11th hour. Think about this. She did this in two months. <laughs> she was everywhere, she talked to everybody, and people didn't come out, I don't know why, and it doesn't even matter. He's now the president. I'm still not gonna say his name. <laughs> <laughs> That's not gonna change.